So that brings us to this speech, this speech, uh, which is really a sermon that uh, Martin Luther King gave in 1967 on the occasion of the 90th anniversary of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, where he came to begin his work of changing the world some 12 years previous. And it begins with a description of the United States in 1967 that is painfully parallel to the United States of 2011. He starts out by saying, and I quote, I'm worried about our nation because it's sick with racism still. Think about the fact that we live in a nation founded on the principle that all men are created equal, yet men are still arguing over whether the color of a man's skin determines the content of his character. He goes on to say that our nation is sick with militarism. Any nation that spends 70 to $80 billion on military pursuits is headed towards its spiritual doom. And it's sick with excessive materialism. The Lord knows we saw that on Monday with the Martin Luther King Day sales and the super weekend sales, those, those people using politically correct terminology in the marketplace. Um, he asked us to think about the fact that in 1967, there were 38 to 50 million people who were poverty stricken, living below the poverty level. And yet, we are the richest country in the history of the world. And he cited a gross national product at that time of over $800 billion. And in that analysis, he goes on to talk about the poor people's campaign that he was to lead a year later. Uh, because this was in December, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, December of 1967. So he goes on and says, despite the fact that he's worried about America, he still maintains hope. And he goes on to define what hope is. He says that hope is not to be confused with optimism. Sheer optimism, he called it, is magic hope. Magic hope is the notion that tomorrow everything will be all right. It is the notion that in the flow of time itself, there is a miraculous quality that automatically makes things better. That's magic hope. And he makes the distinction between that and realistic hope. Realistic hope is the willingness to face the risk of failure and to, do, uh, to adopt an in spite of quality. <laughs> then he goes on to make the distinction between hope and desire. He said that hope has a we quality whereas desire has an I quality. You can desire a new car. You can desire a new beautiful outfit. You can desire a new home. But you hope for freedom. You hope for peace. They have a we quality. Then he goes on to identify the necessity of hope for life, creativity, and rationality. He said, a hopeless individual is a dead individual. And he may be alive physically, but he is dead spiritually and psychologically. He may go on to live another 30, 40, or 50 years, but the cessation of breathing in his life 
will merely be the belated announcement of an earlier death of the spirit. He died when he lost hope. And, <coughs> excuse me, he then cites the role of hope and love as the animator and the undergirder of hope. Because as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he is drawing on the apostle Paul who set up what he called this durability, uh, this, this miraculous uh, trilogy of durability, faith, hope, and love. So he concludes by reminding us that there are moral laws that are as abiding as the physical laws that govern the universe. And that when we hope, it means we have faith in something. And when we hope, it means we love something. And that the important thing to understand is that um, these moral laws cannot be broken. They break us. In the same way that the law of gravity uh, insists that what goes up must come down, and we don't break that law, he said that um, history is replete with the bleached bones of nations and the crumbled wreckage of communities that have failed to follow the law of love and the law of justice. And so he ends the, the sermon by uh, going to scripture in a very, very dramatic way where he talks about the example, what am I doing wrong? Mute? Okay. Thank you. Mute image. Thank you. Where he says the people who ultimately, ultimately, uh, refuse to give up illustrate hope more than anybody else. And he cites those people who live through shadow slavery in the United States of America. And he talks about the prophet Jeremiah. He looked out and he noticed the ambiguities of history. He noticed good people suffering and evil people prospering. He said, Is there no bomb in Syria? Is there no physician there? Senses later, our foreparents came along. And they noticed the inequalities of life. Nothing to look forward to morning after morning but the sizzling heat, the raw high quick of the overseer of our road to come, but they did an amazing thing. They looked back across the centuries and they took Jeremiah's question mark and straightened it into an exclamation point. And they said, King, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Yeah. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. And then I like that other verse because, you know, I feel discouraged sometimes. Right. Around in Alabama and Mississippi and up in Cleveland and Chicago, every now and then I feel discouraged. Living every day under the threat of death, I feel discouraged every now and then. And feel my works in vain, but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. And this is the faith, the faith that will carry us through the dark days ahead. So, what uh, we plan to do here with this project is uh, set up an intake mechanism for people to, first of all, think about the question, what does hope mean to them, um, as well as to uh, share with me those uh, parts of their lives uh, in Detroit 
in the world and within themselves that uh, they're not that happy or hopeful about. And select uh, individuals who um, would read uh, some selections from the speech in a three channel uh, video installation. Um, there are people in this city who are putting question marks behind Detroit, and there are people in this city who are putting exclamation marks behind this city. And I want them to hear one another, and I want to watch what it leads to. Um, and I'm moving in faith uh, and in hope, and I'm willing to face the risk of failure. Um, and with that, I'll take your question.